In my hand right here is the Ryzen Strix Halo, or as you may be familiar with, the Ryzen AI Max Plus, but regardless of what it's called, this is the 128 gigabyte of unified system memory machine from AMD. Now, the specific thing I'm holding in my hand is the GMK Tech Evo X2, but the actual device manufacturer that this comes from is somewhat agnostic to today's video, as there are a bunch of different flavors of manufacturer that have been putting this inside their systems. Framework has an offering, obviously GMK Tech has one, there are a bunch of other mini PC manufacturers now putting this in their products. HP even has a little mini desktop with this chip or system inside of it. So for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the performance of this device with the specific emphasis on using it for local AI. Now, I find truthfully that there are definite pros, but there are some definite cons that I think unfortunately were kind of glossed over in some of the reviews that folks, myself included, may have seen with this device. So we're going to talk about the positives and the negatives, and hopefully I can try to kind of shed some light on my personal experience with this, which I did purchase myself, and over the past few weeks I've become acquainted with it to the point where I feel comfortable giving a opinion piece on my experience with this so far and what I find to be the strengths as well as the weaknesses. In terms of this specific system I'm holding in my hand, I was able to get this for a relatively good price thanks to my local micro center and we'll kind of talk about some of the pricing in the video, but beyond that I would say Overall, I have no complaints with this physical device. I find that the plastic on it is perhaps something more akin found in like a dollar store toy, but the rest of it is aluminum. Uh, it doesn't seem to make too much noise. The fan has little RGB lighting. And overall, I don't have any real complaints about the specific box that's in my hand here. So with that, let's jump into the video and take a look at the Strix Halo. Also, don't forget to subscribe. So I have the machine running Ubuntu 24.04. Unfortunately, if you're interested in seeing the performance of this device on Windows, I'm unable to assist, being that I actually just immediately put Linux on it. I didn't even boot it into Windows, but I presume that a lot of folks who are going to be interested in using this for local AI will likely follow that same path of having some variant or flavor of Linux on it. Now, I would like to start out by just showcasing one of the main strong selling points of this system, which is its ability to run large LLMs. So for this, we're going to hop into LM Studio. I have heard community members mention other things that may be better with this. I believe it was something called Lemonade or Lemonade Server, but because LM Studio is fairly well known and aesthetically pleasing to run models in, I want to just showcase something here. And really, in a lot of the reviews I saw for this device, it basically seemed like the individual would just run OpenAI's open source GPT OSS 120B show that it worked and be like, this device is perfect for AI, which is kind of partially what we're going to do right here. But I want to give an actual head-to-head -head showcase comparison in why this is very strong for LLMs. So as this model loads in, behind me, and it may be difficult to see, is a machine that has two NVIDIA 3090 Ti graphics cards in it. Somewhat antiquated at this point, but the machine behind me has a total of 48 gigabytes of video memory and 128 gigabytes of system RAM. So I am running the exact same OpenAI GPT OSS 120B model on the machine behind me and getting a speed of 13 0.77 tokens per second in my response. Now, I would assume some folks watching this video may be kind of on the fence about getting started with local AI, so for the purpose of simplicity, we can think of token speed as just a way to measure a machine's performance in running a specific model. Now, as I write this, we're going to begin to see its chain of thought, and I do have the reasoning effort set to the highest potential option, which I did also have set on the machine behind me. So we're going to see a relatively verbose chain of thought here, and then we'll see an actual outputted story. So I'm not going to spend time actually reading the story, but the whole purpose of this is to see what just appeared down here, which is the token speed. So this got 46.9 tokens per second in running the same exact model that the machine behind me, which is significantly larger, more power hungry, um, likely louder if it's not liquid cooled, and far less efficient. So 47 tokens per second versus 
13.77 tokens per second. And this highlights the absolute strong suit of this device and really what is its overall selling point. This is extremely efficient in many different factors. It is size efficient, so this takes up a really tiny amount of desk space. In terms of a comparable device that could run a model like this at this speed, it is significantly quieter. It does have a fan that will ramp up, however, depending on one's level of being used to being around loud computers, it is really fairly quiet, all things considered. Beyond that, we actually have the overall cost to run this device, where I think the power supply on this GMK Tech is around 230 watts of the power brick that actually plugs into the computer. The machine behind me, which just ran the same model at a much slower rate, has a 1500 watt power supply in it with two graphics cards that will each take up to 450 watts of power. So the absolute, like, the great selling point of this is its efficiency in running LLMs or local LLMs and just running things in a very efficient manner. It probably sounds like I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but that is really what this machine excels at. And for anyone who is interested in being able to run a model like this locally, and this is really a very well-regarded performant open source model. Of course, there are critiques about its level of censorship and things of that sort, but overall, it is capable of running these larger and more performant LLMs, and the direction in which these models have been trending towards architecturally are very fitting of this device. So again, we're not going to get super technical in this video, but I do want to say that overall for running LLMs, this device is probably one of the best current options out there. Obviously, you have Apple devices with their unified memory setups, and truly, that is a perfectly acceptable option as well, although I do believe it would be more cost prohibitive to buy one of those that has a comparable specification to this, and beyond that, then you're locked into Apple's ecosystem. This can run Windows, it can run Linux, and it has a lot more versatility in terms of the software. So let's talk pricing since that is obviously a large consideration for this device. I was fortunate in that my local micro center actually had these in stock and the price we see here on the screen is actually $100 more expensive than I purchased this for a few weeks ago. So I ended up paying $17.99 for this and I know there are various manufacturers who have this Strix Halo system for varying prices. There's Framework, HP has a system like this and there are a bunch of other small kind of NUC or whatever you want to call these mini PCs manufacturers who have this offering. I will say that at $17.99, which is what I paid for this, that was by far the cheapest entry point into this system that I had been able to find. I had actually originally pre-ordered the Framework desktop. I was in batch number one, so I ordered it fairly early, but over time, I was kind of not sure how the landscape would evolve in the time that I placed the pre-order to the time that I actually got the device, so I did regretfully cancel that, but overall, this is kind of the same thing in a different package. I'm sure there are some more finite details and differences between the two, but for the purpose of running AI on it and local LLMs, it is very likely a similar experience. Now, I will note that at Micro Center, I noticed they also have the 64 gigabyte RAM version of this device, which they have listed at $13.99, and truthfully, if this one is, well, $17.99 when I purchased it, but even $18.99, I think it's a no-brainer to spend the extra $500 to get double the amount of memory and double the amount of storage as well. So I always, this one kind of was just confusing to me because it seemed to be far too expensive comparative to what the top of the line device was. And really, your options are going to vary depending on whether or not you're close to a micro center, whether or not you want this specific model or you want a framework or an HP or something like that. So that is just something to consider. So we've covered running LLMs, but obviously with generative AI, there is far more than just running text-based LLMs. And this is unfortunately where this review is going to turn, I don't want to say negative, but perhaps a bit less positive. So first and foremost, I have to say, it seems like support for this specific machine is still rather experimental from AMD themselves. And this is something that frustrates me, not even due to that, but Basically, I found in the reviews that I saw for this specific machine, it very much seemed to gloss over actually using it for anything beyond just running GPT OSS in LM Studio. I find that perhaps folks who get sent these things don't necessarily live with them, so they set it up, go over a few hit list checkpoints, show it, and then, hey, fantastic, it works great. 
in actually having purchased this myself and used it for the past few weeks, I find that there is a lot here that feels unfinished and it is really quite frustrating. So what I'm doing right now is actually attempting to run Quen Image on this device. And this is actually, this is going to highlight something that I'm a little disappointed about here. Everything that I have seen for running anything that is not a local LLM. So for video generation using Alibaba's WAN 2.2, image generation, stable diffusion, everything I am seeing here is standing on the shoulders of the open source community who is working very hard to actually support this device to run things aside from LLMs. The thing I'm running right here is from this individual on GitHub, they have an instruction video on how to get this working. They're using the framework desktop. And this is all basically done from someone contributing to the open source community to actually give owners of this system an option to more simply run video and image generation. Now, It's tough because I find that could I get this working on my system without having these issues that I'm running into right here? Absolutely, yes. The point is that truthfully, I've played with this for a while and it's still bugging out. And this is, of course, not the fault of the person who's kindly actually gone ahead and provided a solution for doing this stuff. It's just that I don't see that it is worth the time to mess with and learn this new ecosystem for actually doing video or image generation when the truth or reality is the system behind me can do image and video generation much quicker than this machine will be able to and I won't have to fiddle with an ecosystem that is definitely still not mature and not really well supported by the actual manufacturer. The thing I'm seeing is the open source community is really propping this system up. We have things like this which are showing performance comparisons in prompt processing speeds with a bunch of different setups on this system and this is really why the open source community is fantastic because they're passionate and they care and you end up with things like this that are invaluable resources to the people who purchase these systems. It is just, I suppose, frustrating to me that a lot of this is still necessary because it seems like the software support for this is truthfully half-baked. And I understand that in posting this video, I may get people commenting saying, well, you just had to change this setting and then it would have been all set. I understand that and I'm more than capable of getting this system running with all this stuff eventually over time through troubleshooting. My point is I don't know that some of these workarounds or monkey patches should be necessary in a system that has been shown or marketed to us as an all-in-one AI powerhouse solution. And if we do some digging, we're basically going to see that the sentiment I've just shared is definitely echoed among some other purchasers of these devices. You can see numerous posts on Reddit. You can see GitHub issues where some folks are saying, okay, how does this not have official support? Someone said this is marketed as an NVIDIA DGX Spark competitor, but then having zero official software support. And then we go into individuals suggesting like, well, the rock has these Python wheels and things like that, but it seems like the rock is more experimental builds. And the whole kind of thing I'm trying to convey here is that this is a lot of jargon and lingo to need to learn in a new ecosystem for a device that was marketed and shown as being a fantastic all-in-one AI device. And that's really what frustrates me is I believe the software maturity level for this device does not line up with the level in which it was conveyed to be the perfect do-it-all AI solution. And basically, when you go ahead and actually look into what is suggested to get some things running with this device, the first thing in the roadmap is basically saying this project is under active development and not stable for production use. So a lot of what is suggested to actually get this thing working with specific software stacks or whatever is something that is still in and of itself experimental. And 
that is just something that was a little disappointing to me once I started getting into this and figuring, oh, I'll run some image generation and stuff like that because folks will want to see it in the video. And I go back to, would it be possible for me to troubleshoot a little more and figure out maybe there's something I've done wrong here? There are specific things listed here to try to fix things in Ubuntu 24.04. There is a unified memory setup step that you need to go ahead and do so that the system sees the RAM as like one single available pool. And I've done all of these things and I've put in a decent level of troubleshooting and it just still is not performing very well. So I don't personally see it as worth the time to actually go ahead and get all of those things fixed on this device partially because I only purchased this to basically run larger vision language models but also because I have other machines that are more mature like the beefcake behind me um, and it's just you know so really that is going to conclude my honest opinion on this device as someone who has purchased it specifically for AI. Like I said, the positives of this device are that it is fantastic at running larger LLMs in a far more efficient manner than pretty much anything on the market. I do believe this will mature over time. The ecosystem will evolve, and as we already saw, the open source community is doing a ton of work to actually bring this to a much better place than it was released at, which is awesome and big applause to them. I will say, positive things I've noticed is in some of these GitHub issues and places where folks raise issues about support with this system, there does seem to be a decent amount of AMD software engineers who are actually responding to those issues and basically saying like, hey, we hear you, we're working on it, it's in the pipeline. So that is something that I view as a positive and it is very nice and comforting to see that as with a first generation or unique product like this, one always has the slight concern in the back of their mind if it will ultimately end up as like an orphaned product that has no official support like after a year but I see a lot of folks from AMD actually seemingly being interested and invested in supporting this and helping fix the issues that do come up so that's definitely nice to see I would say that if you're interested in playing with local AI you probably can't get a better machine to run local LLMs for the price than you could with this, barring going and getting some form of Apple system. But even then, I believe the equivalent specification would be significantly more expensive to have that much RAM available. And then you're locked into a specific ecosystem, which this device is not. Now, I guess that really will conclude my overall thoughts on this. But being that I do have a channel focused on local AI and things like that, I wanted to give my thoughts as someone who purchased this themselves to actually use it for specific tasks as opposed to just kind of worked with it for a day or so just to show like, hey, it runs GPT OSS, so it's perfect for using AI in Linux. And I wanted to give my honest experience with this device so far. It is possible that I've made some mistakes in terms of the configurations here or something like that, but the overall point in what I would like to resonate from this video is that the level of setup and tweaking that was necessary that may have led to those mistakes was not something that was really advertised as being a thing. It was seemingly conveyed that this is a production ready like all set to go device can do anything and it's good at running local LLMs. Everything else is going to require tweaking and depending on how much time you have or how much you like or dislike doing that, that may be a big driving factor in whether or not someone decides to go for this device. So that's going to conclude my honest thoughts on the AMD Strix Halo or whatever you'd like to call it. There are a bunch of different names for it. And yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.